In Jesus' name, we pray. We're going to now pray for every worshiper in this service this morning. We want to pray that there will be something for everyone. Those who are coming here as sinners, the Lord will so minister to them and bring them under conviction and save them beautifully this morning that they will walk out of this service saved. Let's pray for those who are backsliding that today the Lord will steady their steps and get them going in the faith. Let's pray that believers will be revived. Everyone that is in this service today, we come, uh, well, they will not, not, none will go as they came. Please open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Pray for the worshipers. There will be no careless souls among the youths, among the adults, among the children. Everyone, we feel the presence of God and are just. Let's pray for the man of God, our Jesus, that the Lord will prepare him specially for today. The message for the hour will be given him so that everything that God has earmarked for us today he will be enabled to deliver without restraint, without constraint. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we are grateful to you this morning because we know that you brought us here so that we will give you worship, for you deserve our worship. And Lord, we are praying and asking that Every step we take here, every move we make here, Lord, today, we prove rewarding. In the name of Jesus Christ, we else can pray, Lord, that we shall feel your presence. We shall see a manifestation of your glory. Our Lord and our God, we pray that everyone that comes to this service today, we know that you are indeed in this place. Our Lord and our God, we ask and pray that you give us understanding of your word. We pray, Lord, that you will give us wisdom to be able to apply everything we are learning here today in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank and bless you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, we pray. As we remain standing, we're going to sing from gospel, hymns, and songs. And we are singing hymn number 10. Gospel, hymns, and songs, number 10. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. The glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth and abroad the honors of Thy name. Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that beats our sorrows cease. Tis music in the sinner's ears his life and health and peace. He breaks the power of cancelled sin. He sets the prisoners free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood availed for me. 
hear him, ye deaf, is praise ye dumb, is loosened tongues employ ye blind, behold your Savior come, and leap ye lame for joy. our prayer. Our Father, we are grateful unto you for bringing us here this morning. We thank you because we know you are the greatest teacher. We pray that Lord, this morning you will teach us your word. Grant us a heart that is receptive and the grace to obey all we are hearing. You will grant unto us in Jesus' name. We thank you because you answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Today we are looking at lesson 1005, and the topic we are looking at is praising God for his faithfulness. Can we say that together? Our God is faithful, and he has spared that faithfulness from us. Our memory verse is taken from Psalm 106, verse 1. Anyone that have committed that to, to memory can come forward and share the memory verse with us. And let one of the uh, choir prepare to read our text. Memory verse. Anyone that have committed the memory verse to memory, please share it with us. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. O give thanks unto the Lord. 
for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Psalms 106, verse 1. God bless you. At self is taken from Psalm 100 to 106. We're going to pick some selected verses because of our time. We are reading Psalm 100 from verse 1 to 5. Psalm 100 from verse 1. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Psalm 103, from verse 1 to 5. Psalm 103, from verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth all who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Thank you. Psalm 106, from verse 1 to 3. Psalm 106, from verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all his praise? Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Thank you, and God bless you. Our text revealed very clearly that God is worthy of our praises. Praises are comely and pleasant to God. The psalmist's life presents a challenge to contemporary Christians to praise the Lord, to exalt and extol his name for his unparalleled virtues, attributes, power, and providence. Praise is powerful. It brings down God's power and presence upon his people. Believers who have received great message from God should give testimonies and praise him even in the congregation as an example and model for other believers. Psalm 34, verse 1. Psalm 34, verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Question number one. Why should believers pray, always praise God? Anyone? Yes, my brother. First, we need to praise him for who he is. And then we need to praise him for a lot of benefits like salvation and physical provisions, protections, and so many blessings he has bestowed upon us. Thank you, and God bless you. We're going to look at three points in this study. Point number one, praising God for his manifold goodness and faithfulness. And number two, personal commitment to godliness for expectations in prayer. And number three, proving faithfulness of God despite Israel's unfaithfulness. Point number one, praising God for his manifold goodness and faithfulness. In Psalm 100, let's look at verses 2 and 3. Psalm 100, Verses 2 and 3. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pastures. You will see from there that God is worthy of our praises, because he is the one that has created us. 
He alone is worthy of worship. And believers should give their hearts and life to worship him at all times. And uh, we should not be like people that Jesus Christ mentioned in Matthew chapter 15. Let's look at it. Matthew chapter 15. I want to read from verse 7. It says, Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, These people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In verse 9 it says, But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. A lot of people today, actually, you will see them in praise worship, but they live in sin. And uh, when you are living in sin, there's no way you can praise God acceptably. There's no way God will listen to praise worship of a sinner. An individual who continues in his sin in the morning and in the evening, he, he, he continues the same thing. In the morning, he comes to church. In the evening, he lives in sin. People like that, their praise worship means nothing unto God. In Psalm 100 and 1, verse 2 and 3, Psalm 101, verses 2 and 3, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave unto me. Service to God may attract some challenges and persecutions that have a tendency of robbing one of joy and gladness. Yet, we must remain joyous and glad at all times. It was this same mind that Paul the Apostle and Silas had when they were in prison that they prayed and sang praises unto God. As you all know that Christian life will attract a lot of persecutions. And that should not shut up our mouth in praising God. We should even at the time of trials and persecution imbibe the habit of praise, worship, and glorify God because what it did for Paul and Silas, it will also do the same if we go on rejoicing, praising him even when we are being persecuted. Jehoshaphat also praised God when they approached the battlefront against Moab. Mansia and Ammon. Question number two, what should be the attitude and commitment of believers who praise God? Yes. A believer that trusts and uh, God must be born again and he or she must live in a life that pleases God. God bless you. Let's look at Psalm 105. I want to read from verse 14. Psalm 105, from verse 14. It suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, it reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, it called for a famine upon the land. It break the old staff of bread. It sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant whose feet they heard with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. The king said and lose him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. And he made him lord of his house and ruler of his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham, and he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. In trials, in persecution, the Lord will make us stronger than all our enemies in Jesus' name. There are numerous blessings we receive from God. The faithful covenant keeper, number one, forgiveness from all our iniquities. God forgives sin. And we need to praise him for that. Number two, healing for our sicknesses is our healer. And up to today, 
even hospitals say we care only God that heals. As we depend on Him, He will heal us of every sickness and affliction. Number three, redemption from destruction. Nothing is more destructive than sin and a deceitful loss. But through the sacrifice of Christ at the cross, we are redeemed from eternal destruction. Number four, it's loving kindness and tender mercies. Number five, good things for our satisfaction, leading to renewal of our strength like the eagles. Other benefits include revelation of himself to those who fall out us and draw near unto him. Question number three, mention some of the covenant provisions that God faithfully keeps. Anyone? God promised to heal us and to deliver us and also to provide for us. God bless you. Point number two, personal commitment to godliness for expectations in prayer. We need to understand that we are expected to live a godly life if we are to enjoy the blessings of God and if we want God to answer our prayer. In Psalm 66, let's look at that. Psalm 66, I want to read from verse 18. Psalm 66, verse 18. The Bible says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. A sinner will not receive answer to prayer. If we continue in sin and we are praying, we are deceiving ourselves, repenting from sin, accepting Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, that is what we connect all to answers to prayer if we will do as a command. The state of our heart determines one's work with the Lord. Faithfulness is a great virtue that God requires from all his servants. Let's look at Psalm 101. I want to read from verse 1. Psalm 101, verse 1. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave wise, myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will thou come unto me? I will walk within my heart with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person whose privily, privately slandereth his neighbor. Him will I cut off. Him that had an high look and a proud heart will not I permit. When I suffer, my eyes shall be upon the faithful to the land that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. In the seven, he that walketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. You will see from here, God hates sin, and it will not pardon anyone who continue in sin and refuse to repent. If we continue in sin and wickedness, judgment will fall upon sinners, and they will perish. But God is calling all, all men to repentance so that we live a godly life while we are here, and he will answer our prayers in Jesus' name. As we wait for the imminent return of Christ, believer must show godly example at home, at workplace, in our community and our church, and remain committed to preaching the undiluted gospel that saves, sanctifies, and takes to heaven. The uses of entertainment industry, social and electoral media, and other platforms to pervert and pollute our society. Here the Bible says, we should not love the world. None of the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Whatever level we are in the church, we need to know that God hates sin, both secret and open sin for all to enjoy. Answer to prayers and his divine protection all the time. 
we need to remind ourselves of our Father in the Lord what to us. He said, a leader's sin is a leading sin. When we are over the people we are living in sin, we are leading the people to sin. A leader's sin is a leading sin. He said, a pastor's sin becomes a perversive sin. A minister's sin is a misleading sin. They are not reading you. They are not reading their Bible. They are reading you. If you are a minister, you are living in sin. It's a misleading sin. A shepherd's sin becomes a shielding sin. A father's sin in the house becomes a festering sin. A mother's sin becomes a molding sin. A naked sin in the church is a nurtured sin. A little sin in the congregation becomes a licensed sin. A open sin becomes an operating sin. We should run away from sin in all totality so that we can enjoy God's presence, God's power, God's protection, and at the end, we get to heaven. The Lord will keep us rapturable in Jesus' name. Question number four, how can we maintain commitment to godliness in the midst of corruption and perversion? Anyone? For us as believers, we ought to stand where God asks us to stand so that any sin we not pollute like that of Rehoboam, we should stand with God. God bless you. Point number three, proving faithfulness of God despite his stress on faithfulness. Our God is merciful. Even with all that Israelites were doing in those days, God was still faithful to them. And God is still faithful to us today. What is calling all men to be faithful. It's calling us to stand even in the face of trouble and problems. In Psalm 105, Psalm 105, I want to read from verse 7. It says, He is the Lord God, Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered His covenant forever, the word which He commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant He made with Abraham and His oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lords of your inheritance. When they were bought, a few men in number, yea, very few and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong, yea, he reproved kings for their sake. Verse 15, saying, Touch not my anointed, and do my prophets no harm. When you look at all these things the Lord has done for the Israelites, these people, they were still unfaithful to God. And that's not expected from you and I today, that the Lord has been good to us in this church. He expects us to be faithful. The Lord will help us to be faithful in Jesus' name. But Israel, like the fallen man, they fail woefully to keep God's covenant, God's covenant terms and conditions. They soon deviated from his statutes, and they went into idol worship. They went into strange marriages. They went into unequal you, false worship, and into lawlessness. In Psalm 106, let's look at it uh, from verse 13. Psalm 106, from verse 13, they soon forget his works, they waited not for his counsel, but they lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. And that is what normally happens when we go against God's reaching commandment. In verse 43, of Psalm 146, many times they did deliver them, but they provoked him with their counsel, and they were brought low for their iniquity. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry, 
and he remembered for he remembered for them his covenant and repented according to the multitude of his mercies. In what area do we promote God today? In many areas. You see, most of us we are not faithful to our what we have told us we will be doing. In your district church, what time do you get to your church on Sunday? Maybe after they start the scripture. Maybe when the message has even started. You see, most of us, when they say that, come to Bible study, you are not there. God is not happy with this kind of attitude. First Saturday of every month is gem meeting here. Pastors, gem leaders, what time do we get here? We provoke God in many areas. Non challenge attitude to direct thing that we are to do for him that will make him happy with us. Even when you come to gem meeting, maybe when they are almost when they are almost true, nine o'clock is the time, you come eleven o'clock. You come eleven thirty. When program is almost ended, you see we provoke God in many areas and uh, we have to repent from all these. But sliding and departure from God, it has serious spiritual consequences, both in life and in eternity. When one ye to sin and abandon his commandment, it grips him and set the stage for loss of divine favor, preservation, presence, power, support, assistance, direction, grace, glory, fellowship, and intimacy. It also leads us to spiritual the loss of spiritual focus and for future of entrance into heaven and eternal rewards. But sliding is dangerous. And do you know, but sliding takes steps. By the time you are missing program, you are missing services, you have to come 9 o'clock, you are coming 11 o'clock, you have to be in the church early in the morning for service scripture. You are there when they are almost through with the service. It's a gradual step to backsliding. And it is dangerous for anyone to continue in this habit. The Lord will grant you the power to repent from this morning in Jesus' name. Question, what are the possible consequences of grieving God? Anyone? Yes. Can lead to loss of spiritual focus and divine favor. Thank you and God bless you. The Lord is calling us to retrace our steps. Is calling us to come back to him fully as we are praising God for his faithfulness. What will heaven say about you today? Will heaven praise you for being faithful? Will heaven praise you for serving God aright? Will heaven praise you that what you are hearing, you are obeying? We need to take steps from today and live the life that heaven will have a good record about us. Shall we rest upon our feet and talk to the Lord that God will help us. We will not be dull of hearing the grace to do all we are hearing. Let's pray that the Lord will grant unto us. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we are grateful unto you because your word is real. Your word is powerful. We have heard your word this morning. We pray the great to arise and do what is right in your sight. You will grant unto us in Jesus' name. We thank you because you've answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. We just had a study from volume 78, study 105, 1005. Praise God for his faithfulness. If you have a question, please can you come to the front so that you'll be given an opportunity to ask your question. If you are towards the back, you can move forward. Sister. Good 
morning, sir. Good morning. So my question is, uh, is line with today's topic, as said the scriptures, talking about God's graciousness, his favor, blessed with all wrong blessings. Uh, the issue is the word, I want to bring in line with, side by side, the word, lock, L-U-C-K, and divine favor, as respect to the kingdom lifestyle. As believers, sir, are we expected to use the word luck in, in place of favor in certain situations? That I've never seen such word in the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, sir. That's my question. Okay, thank you. Let's have the next brother. Good morning, sir. Sir, Morning. my question is, I just want to have more clarification and understanding that why is it that today, deeper life as a church, we are lacking praises, praise and worship. What do you mean by that? Thank you, sir. I can remember late 70s and early 80s. When we are in the church, there's a section of praise and worship. There will be salvation, tears, and everything. People will be giving their life to Christ. But today, sir, while in such a thing, not coming up again, sir. Thank you, sir. Please. The brother that asked the last question. Please, can you wait? Are you saying that we are not praising God in the church now? We are praising God. But I remember late 70s and early 80s. We, at least we bring out about 10 or 15 minutes just to jam our hands together. No, in the midst of praising God, people will be crying, salvation, everything. Even our foresters there. When the time they will be ministering on the pulpit, you will see salvation people will be giving their life to Christ. But today, sir, while I uh, in such a praise, not coming up again, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Please, let's uh, provide answers to the questions that have been asked. We've been studying from the book of Psalms. And uh, you know that all scriptures, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, is given by inspiration, the inspired word of God. It is that inspiration that makes the scriptures acceptable as God's words, including the Psalms that we are presently uh, studying now. It is the word of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for instruction in righteousness, to guide us in our ways of life, to encourage us when we are discouraged. Actually, the Psalms is a collection of lyrical poems, a composite work containing multiple authors, all inspired by God. David was the author of most of them, with other authors like Asa, Korah, Solomon, Moses, and the rest. But everything you see written in the Word of God will come to fulfillment. The Bible says that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will not pass away. If you come to Luke chapter 24, and in verse 44, Luke chapter 24, verse 44, and he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. And so both the, uh, the book of the law, Genesis to Deuteronomy, and all the prophets, and the Psalms, that the Word of God. And we find encouragement when we read the Word of God. When we are discouraged, there will be something that you will find as you read the Word of God and meditate on it with an open mind. God will minister to you. And if you are a sinner too, you find forgiveness in the Word. You have a bus leading, and you are at church this morning. You read the Word of God. You find a place where the Bible says that it is not the will of God that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 
And so everything we need for the total life, all our questions, all our challenges, all our, the problems that we have in life, everything, all the answers that we're asking for is found in this scripture. I believe you have your Bible there this morning as you read it. And as you hear our Father and the Lord preach the message today, the Lord is going to enlighten your eyes. And the Lord is going to bless all of us abundantly through his word in Jesus' name. As we read the chapters that we have today from chapter 100 to 106, put together, these Psalms, they present clear expression of praise and thanksgiving. Even in the time of trouble, even in the time of need, in the hour of need, you praise the name of the Lord. And as you praise God, the way that is blocked will open. If you come to Psalm 100 um, and from verse 1, Psalm 100 from verse 1, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his cause with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. In Psalm 101 also, you see the praise and thanksgiving carried on as we read in verse 1 and 2. I'll sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I'll behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O when will thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart that will sing of the mercies of the Lord. And I'll talk about the justice system that is not partial, the justice system of God. We praise God for his righteousness and uprightness. And in chapter 102, verse 1, chapter 102, let's read verse 12 now. For thou, O Lord, shall endure forever, somebody say amen, and thy remembrance unto all generations. Mind you, in Psalm 102, this psalm was, this psalmist was really sad. If you look at the topic there, a prayer of the afflicted, when he's overwhelmed, and pour it out his complaints before the Lord. Even in, at that time, when the psalmist was overwhelmed, the Bible says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. He could still find a time to give praise unto God, even in the time of adversity. And um, in chapter 103, we see a lot of reasons to praise God there. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfy thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. So the Lord is worthy of our praise. He forgives iniquity. He pardons iniquity. Then we come to him and we ask for forgiveness. That's what the psalmist is saying here. Forgives all thy iniquities, heals all thy diseases, redeems your life from destruction. And in chapter 104, uh, from verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord our God, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. And in verse 4 to 5, Who maketh his angel spirit and his ministers a flame of fire, who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. And uh, in Psalm 105, verse 1 to 3, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous world, glory ye in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Your heart will rejoice this morning as you seek the Lord, as you patiently wait on him, on him, the Lord will visit you very shortly. You see, some people, instead of praying to God, instead of praising God and serving him 
the way the Lord has said we, we should serve him, they are waiting for uh, quick success. They are looking for luck. They are, they are looking for maybe somebody have left money on the ground and you see it, you pick it. Let me tell you something. If you are going to make it in life, if you are going to succeed in life, you need God at the very bottom of your success, at the very heart of your success. And so you need to work hard and pray. And you need to seek the Lord instead of waiting for luck to happen. In fact, the Lord will favor us. That's what the Bible says. Luck, uh, luck is a game of chance. It's like somebody that goes to play all this, uh, uh, whatever they play over there. You find some people, instead of them to go to work, they go to somewhere and they are still doing football betting. And on Sunday evening, when they are supposed to be in the house fellowship, they are waiting to see whether luck will shine on their ways. Let me tell you, God has promised that if we work hard, He will reward our work. God is going to reward your work. And the Lord will favor you. The Bible says that they that be planted by the Lord, they shall still bring forth even in old age. The Lord will favor you in Jesus' name. And in that same psalm, we now come to 105, from verse 1 to 3. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. That should be our talks, our, our conversation now, the wondrous works of God. Stop complaining about government. Stop complaining about what is happening around you. Rather, spend that time. Talk about the wondrous works of the Lord and you'll get your deliverance faster. In verse 2, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. And it's a 106, verse 1 to 6. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all his praise? Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Praise the Lord. My brother was asking, why is it that David was always getting favor from God? Was it because he was praising God? Or what was it? Is God partial? Will God forgive David and not forgive someone else that prays for forgiveness? Well, let's look at the scriptures here and find out uh, why David was described as a man after God's heart. He was a man of contrite heart. A man that his heart is always very tender. And when the, he, he committed sin, the sin that my brother was talking about, and Nathan the prophet was sent to him, and Nathan uh, presented a story uh, 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 that to, to him, just like a background, and eventually David said uh, that person that was guilty uh, should be punished. And Nathan said, you are the man. At that time, David did not invoke his authority that is within the constitution to send the man away or get him arrested. But he repented. And his repentance was well documented. Well documented in scripture. If you come to Psalm 51 and in verse 1, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. And when my brother was uh, talking about David, he also talked about Ananias and Sapphira. Why is it that David was judged, uh, was forgiven, Ananias and Sapphira were not forgiven? Ananias and Sapphira did not repent. They were telling lies before the, the, the men of God in the church. They were bringing up for deceit. You, you see, if you, if you are not ready to repent, I'm not talking about godly sorrow here about the consequences of what you have done, about the consequences of, of and the punishment that comes as a result of what you have done. We're talking about real repentance, 360 degree, turning away from your sins and say, God, I will do no more. David was not ashamed to have his prayer documented. If you look at Psalm 51, the heading, to the chief musician, a psalm of who? David. He confessed his sins publicly. In verse 2, wash me, thoroughly 
from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. God is a righteous judge. He does not judge unrighteously. You will not say, God is punishing me for nothing. He says he judges righteously. It's clear when he judges. Behold, I was shaped with iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desired truth in the inward part. You find some people today, they say, I prayed, I didn't get converted, but internally, was there truth in that prayer you were praying? Were you serious about it? Are you, were you ready to repent? Or were there some sins that you are still nursing? Or you are ready to leave some sins? The ones that maybe they are hazardous to you, the doctors have been telling you that smoking will kill you one day. And so you leave the smoking, but you continue with fornication and adultery. Or you leave other sins, but you continue with lying. There are some sins that you cleave, that they cleave to you. They are, they are embedded in your system. And when you are like that, God does not deal with in fact, God does not want sinners in his presence. Even in the Psalms, even in the Psalms we read, we read today, come to Psalm uh, uh, 1. Okay? Come to Psalm 102. Psalm 102. I read um, what verse there now. Psalm 102, from verse 1. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. Your cry can only come unto, unto God when your life is straight, when your life is holy, when your life is pure. You see, the, the Lord said he will early destroy the wicked. Okay, come to Psalm 101 in, from verse, uh, from verse uh, 2. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, where will thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked sin before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave unto me. A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. That means I will not partner with a wicked person. I will not be in fellowship with a wicked person. Say, I will not know a wicked person. Who so privily slandereth his neighbor? Him will I cut off. Him that has an, an high look and a proud heart will I not suffer. You know? So when there's that proud heart, high look, all that, God will not suffer. Who so privily standard his neighbor, he will I cut off. Him that has an high look and a proud heart will I not suffer. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that walketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. I pray that you will not be cut off from the city of the Lord. But rather, like David, you move close to God. Sometimes there may be challenges. Sometimes things may be difficult. And no matter what happens, you are always found in the presence of God. You do not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. In Psalm 34 and in verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. You know, that is God's plan. That is God's program. As we draw near the Lord today, the Lord is going to be magnified in our lives in Jesus' name. And when we seek the Lord, there are so many favor. If you read Deuteronomy chapter 28, you see a lot of blessing. Blessed we shall be in the field. Blessed we shall be at home. So many things that God has made available unto us. That we are not, we will, it is not luck that is going to make us succeed, but it's the favor of God that will make us succeed. And we work hard. We work hard and we pray. We don't put our hands in all these get money quick um, uh, programs that some people are pursuing. We stay in the Lord. We stay satisfied in him. 
and we don't abandon the assembly of ourselves together, and we are holy and righteous, and we pay heed to everything the Lord says, at the end of the day, the success we are looking for, it shall come in Jesus' name. I said it shall come in Jesus' name. Let us uh, uh, rise up now and go to the Lord in prayer. We have seen the word of God today. And we have seen that we need to come before his presence with praise. And we see David writing many of these psalms. And when he fell into sin, suddenly, accidentally, he came back to God and he was weeping and he was broken before the Lord. He said, are you like that? Come and worship the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Have you faced some disappointments in life? David said, I have faced some disappointment too. Come, let us worship the Lord together. And let us serve him in righteousness and true holiness. If you are not born again, come to the Lord today. And ask for his mercy. And let that prayer come from the heart, from the depth of your heart. All scriptures, everything that the Lord has written down, it will surely come to pass. All the promises that the Lord has written there, they will come to pass. The judgments, the mercies, everything God has written, it will come to pass. Let us rely on him. Let us trust in him at all times. Temptations may come, but let us pray for grace to help at the hour of need. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we bless you, we thank you, because today we come to praise you. We come to exalt you. Just now we had a conventional song, and it was about praise. We are praising God all the time in this church, and today we have dedicated it to come and thank you in this house. You will accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We are, we are thanking you for all your benefits, the forgiveness of sins, the restoration of backsliders, the sanctification of the heart, the, 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 the baptism with the Holy Spirit, the healing for the, for, the, for the sick, and deliverance for the oppressed. Everything that you have done as a church, we come before you today and we say thank you in Jesus' name. And as, as we have been thanking you in time past, so we are thanking you today. The, the joy we had in your presence in, in the days gone by, we are having the same joy today. We had those good old days, now we are having better present days. In your presence, in the name of Jesus Christ. As we continue today in the service of this morning, Father, let your goodness and your mercies continue with us throughout the service in Jesus' name. And at the end of the day, when we shall be living here, we shall live here rejoicing. Thank you, Father, for your answer. In Jesus' name we pray.
We're going to rise as we take the congregational song. We are singing from Gospel Hymns and Songs, and we are singing hymn number 192. Gospel Hymns and Songs 192. Oh, for a heart to praise my God, a heart from sin set free, a heart that always feels thy blood so freely spilled for me. A heart resigned, submissive, meek, my great Redeemer's throne, where only Christ is heard to speak, where Jesus reigns alone. A humble, lowly, contrite heart, believing true and clean, which neither life nor death can part from him that dwells within a heart in every thought renewed, and full of love divine, perfect and right and pure and good, a copy, Lord, of thine. Thy nature, gracious Lord, impart. Come quickly from above, write thy new name upon my heart, thy new best name of love. Amen.
Gospel Hymns and Songs 85. Give of your best to the Master. Give of the strength of your youth through your soul's fresh glowing ardor into the battle for truth. Jesus has set the example. Give him your loyal devotion. Give him the best that you have. Give of your best to the master. Give him first place in your heart. Give him first place in your service. Consecrate every part. Give and to you shall be given. God, his beloved son, gave, great, gratefully seeking to serve him. Give him the best that you have. Give of your best to the master. Not else is worthy his love. He gave himself for your ransom. Gave up his glory above. Let down his life without murmur you from sin's ruin to save. Give him your heart's adoration. Give him the best that you have. Give of your best to the master. Give of the strength of your youth. Clad in salvation's full armor, join in the battle for truth.
Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And in line with what we have just sung, let's pray that the Lord will give us the willing heart. Give us grace. Give us the kind of spirit that will help us to consecrate every part. We want to pray that the Lord will help us to give him the best of our service, the best of our talents, the best of our time. Please open your mouth and talk to the Lord. You sang it. We want the Lord to impress this upon our hearts so much that it will become a reality in our lives. That we are not begrudging the Lord of anything that we have. Anything that we represent. All for Him, all for His service. Let's pray that God will give us submissive hearts, meek hearts, willing hearts, to go with Him all the way. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're going to uh, collect our, uh, give our offerings. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2, it says, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. This is the time to bring out what you brought to give by way of offering or tithe or some other pledges that you have marked. We want to lift them up to the Lord as we pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you because you are the greatest giver and you have given us all things. Lord, we are grateful, Lord, for the opportunity to also give this token by way of worship. We are praying and asking, Lord, that you accept our offerings, our tithes, and bless the sources, the pockets, and the wallets from where they have come in Jesus' name. Provide more for your children that will continue to give in support of your work. Thank you, Father, for hearing. In Jesus' name, we pray. Please, our leaders and ushers are passing the bags so put your offerings and tithes and pledges in the bags as we continue in prayers we're going to pray for our nation and we all know what you know precarious situation we have found ourselves but god is bringing deliverance the bible says rebuke the company of spare men the multitude of the bulls with the cows of the people till everyone submit himself with pieces of silver. Scatter thou the people that delight in war. We want to pray that in Nigeria there shall be no war. All those who are angling for it, those who are preparing for it, those who are, you know, um, planning for it, want to pray that the Lord will uh, thwart all their efforts. Let's open our mouth and pray. Let's pray that this country, this is God's own country, and the Lord has a final say. Let's pray that those who delight in war and are scheming and are working, God will disappoint their expectations and their machinations. This country, peace will return. Stability will come.
Let's pray that the Lord will halt the spirit of bloodshed going on. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're going to pray for our GS. And the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 33, in verse 24. In Deuteronomy 33, verse 25. It says, Thy shoes shall be iron and brass, and as thy days, so shall thy strength be. God is already doing it in the life of our years. I want to pray that more and more, the Lord will strengthen him. I want to pray that in the years ahead, greater and more glorious things will be heard of him. Please open your mouth and talk to the Lord. That the Lord will strengthen him physically, strengthen him spiritually. Strengthen him ministerially. That he will do more. God see, has a lot for him to do. That God will widen the scope of his vision. And everything needed to actualize those visions will suffer. Please, let's pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. And finally, let's pray for the church. And for the church, we want to pray that the Lord will help every hand that hangs down to be raised. Every knee that is weak will be strengthened. Please open your mouth and talk to the Lord. That all those who are backsliding, those who are weak, God will strengthen them. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we pray and ask that you will grant all that we have uttered with our mouths today in line with your word of promise in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for hearing. In Jesus' name, we pray. Please, you may be seated. We want to recognize those special people that are in our midst who are coming here for the very first time. Please, if you are one of them, anywhere you are, quickly rise on your feet so that we can receive you and give you our pastor's uh, uh, greetings. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Our GS and pastor will want me to extend his greetings to you and he wants you to continue coming. God has used him to bless millions of lives across the world, and you will not be an exception. Please, uh, we have slips to pass to you where you supply all the needed information that will help us be of help to you beyond now. Please, you may be seated as you um, collect that.